Filipino. Oh. Oh, I'm just Filipino. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I know, everyone's always like, you're a Pacific Islander. I'm like, we're all categorized under the Asian race. So. Uh, my man is my man is your man, heart is her man too. Remember I went to a college party and the kids at the party were drinking, you know, all that stuff. And like all of a sudden, like I, I saw a group of boys freestyle rapping. So I like chimed in, started rapping, acting like I knew what I was doing. And in high school, I had like a perm with my hair. So it was like really curly. And then one of the boys just kept calling me Young Ramen the whole night. Cause he was like stringing my hair. And then I was just like, whatever. And then like the other one was just like, Yo, that's Young Noodles. Like, we kept seeing each other around the party, and then I was like, you know, I gotta run around with this name. It's kind of funny. Um, so my dad, he was like, I wouldn't say he was a big DJ, but he used to DJ in the 80s in Alameda. Like, he used to play all the nightclubs out there, which is like the city in California. And he used to go by Mobile Disco 2000. I just remember, like, I didn't really start getting into DJing till like, my sophomore year of high school, I was sneaking out into clubs. And then obviously two and two together, I was like, oh, Pops used to DJ, let me uh, tell him, teach me how to mix. So basically one day he like, we sat in the garage for like nine hours. He was just telling, teaching me how to count beats, do all that yada yada. And then ever since then, like after school, I like, got kicked off of my volleyball team. I found a new passion into something else. I know I was such a bad kid in high school, but like it ended up working out because like I just like look at myself now. I'm like, I'm so creative now. I don't think I would have had this creative freedom if I was like always in sports, you know? So yeah, but that's how my music life pretty much kicked in. I saw the benefit with going from vinyl to digital basically because you get pretty much the whole history experience with DJing. Nowadays, everything's obviously digital. It's so easy, anyone can be a DJ now. Not saying that like no one could back in the day, but I feel like uh, learning the roots and like really getting to know every step of what like a DJ goes through like was, was really worth it. Like nowadays, people just kind of get a MacBook laptop, download music, start playing music. But like, it's, there's no better feeling than like knowing that classical touch of how to like swap, swap out crates, put in vinyl records, you know? My dad, well growing up, the two records I uh, grew up mixing on were Tina Turner and uh, Earth, Wind and & Fire records. And honestly, like that era of music was really fun to learn on just because it's like a feel good vibe, very groovy. Um, I got to play records at my family parties, just like, you know, off like disco and funk. So that was like pretty cool. Well, ba most of the time, all the parties that I usually get booked for are like hip hop and rap parties. So I always just refrain to whatever, whatever the top hits on Billboard are. Um, I dig for a lot of music too. I usually try to mix in R&B with it, like give a nostalgic vibe when I DJ while playing modern day rap. Um, just so I can cater to most people. I'm very open format when it comes to DJing too. So no, I kind of just read off a crowd with what I want to play. I'll go from like a Panic at the Disco song to like Yo Gotti or Nicki Minaj, you know? I don't know. It's, it goes, music goes in a whole different realm once you're in it. <laughs> you know, back then I used to really rehearse my, my DJ sets before I'd go on. I think that was like, one of my things I was just like, oh, I can't mess up this and that. But like nowadays I kind of improv and I kind of just like, um, just freestyle basically. Like I said, like I go based off a crowd. Like I'll have like a prepared set in mind thinking what I'm gonna play, but it can take like a 180 and I'll just completely change the whole set and I'll be like a completely different set. But like, it doesn't take much for me to think quick. I'm very like, I test the waters, I'll play a couple of tracks from different genres, I'll see what they like, and then I'll start mixing as I go. Um, I feel like that's one thing I'm really good at as being a DJ is like how quick I could switch up a vibe, but like still keep the tempo there, you know? Um, Kehlani basically was looking for a female DJ. This was four years ago. And um, back then when I was DJing at 19, uh, there was this man, his name is David Ali, who's now our manager. And he used to throw a bunch of parties in San Francisco. 
He was the only person that was booking me that was under 21 to play his 21 and up parties. And one day, um, David full on started managing her. I was living in Boston at the time. And um, when Kay asked, like, I, you know, I kind of want a female DJ, David pitched me and she was like, oh my God, I had been following her on her SoundCloud or Tumblr. I don't, I forget what site. And basically one day David calls me, I'm in Boston and he's like, you know, this girl I'm starting to manage has nothing but like she can turn into something. We think you'd be a good fit. I didn't really like want to do it because I was kind of like already doing my own thing. I was like styling and like I didn't think I was going to DJ full time. And then one day I like up and left Boston, moved to L.A. And yeah, we met and like I fell in love with her story. She came from nothing. She's like so passionate. She's so good at what she does. And um, ever since then, we've just been upset, inseparable. Um, so we've been on the road for eight months. We started in Europe. Europe was all of February to mid-March. Um, then we had two weeks off. Then we did the Coachella run, um, which was like festival season. And then we kicked into the domestic tour, which is four months. And then we finished off in Australia and Japan. But um, my favorite city, all-time city, would have to be New Zealand. That was an eye-opener city for us. It was so fun. The crowd was so lit the whole entire set. Cause usually like during K set, cause like it's a long set. It's like almost two hours long. Um, it's kind of hard to carry that momentum cause the kids are kind of tired at that point. But in New Zealand, that was just like the best show I feel like we've ever done. Just because of like the crowd's interaction. Um, and also the hometown shows, which was Berkeley. Um, that's Kehlani's almost hometown. She, lit, she went to high school there and um, for her to play at the Greek Theater, which is a 15,000 capacity venue, that was very, very interesting. She sold it out. So that was, a, yeah, the tour has been phenomenal. No fights, everyone ate healthy. It was so good, yeah. So I went to FITM right, the summer right when I graduated high school. So I finished before I turned 21, um, which was awesome because I kind of got a head start, but also I had an advantage because I used to fashion blog back in the day. So that kind of like got my foot through the door with networking. Um, I was already going on trade shows, like meeting a lot of people online. So that's how I got the job offer in Boston to style for uh, Karma Loop, which was like a huge streetwear uh, e-commerce site back in the day. And um, they presented me and was like, we love your style. We think you embody the like the street style girl. Like we want you to be the head stylist off the bat. Like I don't think anyone gets that opportunity off the bat. Like fresh out of college, you know, it was definitely some, some blessed situation. Um, and then, yeah, I, I was DJing. Um, Fitum was cool, I learned a lot. I learned how to fashion design, graphic design. I learned how to like tech draft, like draw buildings and stuff. I still use that, like I still sketch on my free time. Um, I was even DJing the Fitum parties, like our Halloween parties, uh, the graduation party. Yeah, it was, Fitum was really cool. I don't regret it at all. Um, you know, people always talk down upon, upon like art schools, design schools, just cause they're like, you're gonna be in debt for this much. But like, you know, it just, it's up to you to like make the most use of it. I made the most use of it. You see me now, I have like a brand out right now, you know? So send nudes is kind of provocative, but like that's not what the main message behind it. Obviously it plays off a fun play of like sending nudes, but like, you know, I, I kind of like branded it the way where it's like always a female body shape of an illustration, like just lines, everything's embroidered. Um, it's very simple I would and like basic wear, I would have to say. I think, um, yeah, our generation now is not really focused on like the basic millennials, you know, like people aren't really focused on just saving money, buying a house now. People are kind of just like trying to make fast money and a lot of money in the quickest way. And you know, that's sometimes you gotta just go into like separate routes. Like you said, you know, you'd be an entrepreneur, a building owner, you can be a stylist on the side, you can be a DJ. A lot of people are part-time DJs, you know? So like, I think it's amazing that people are finally finding their niches and like utilizing their skill set and not just broadening it into like one, you know, you go to school for one major, that doesn't mean you have to stay in that. Like you can do that down the road. Like I eventually want to go back into styling. Like I love working with people, but like as of right now, it's like DJing's kind of taking off and I like doing separate things, you know, designing too. I'm so happy like I went back into fashion with that. 
Um, makes me feel like my degree was worth it. <laughs> my mom's always like, what are you gonna do with it? I'm like, mom, don't worry, I got a plan. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, I, I'm such a homebody. Like, I'm either at my house, my boyfriend's house, or, you know, sometimes, just like, I work out a lot too. So like, um, I dance Tahitian, I take hot yoga, and I also run in the morning when like, I'm not as sore. But other than that, like that's pretty much how like I like wusa when I get off tour. I meditate every morning. That helps me like even on the road. I'm always clearing my mind, finding my, you know, my balance, and just starting the day off right. And I feel like that's what gives me the energy to keep going. There are times when I want to give up, but I'm like, no, you got to keep going. I like party so much on the road that it's like when I'm home. I'll go out if it's my friend's birthday, but I'm not just going out just to go out. Like, I'm like, yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of jazz-inspired beats. Um, I've been listening to Mind Design a lot. Uh, this man named Kenny Siegel. A lot of um, just zoned out, chilled stuff. Easy listening, you know, like coffee music. Um, that kind of just like zens me out. I don't really listen to turn up stuff when I'm like on days off. I have my turn up moments when I'm out, but I'm like, that's when I DJ. So. Yeah, um, there's a lot of artists I want to like do opening DJ sets for on like a tour on Chance the Rapper would be really cool. I really like his music. Um, SZA, he's like one of my favorite female artists aside from Kaywani right now. Um, who else? Other than that, Rihanna would be the all time goal, but she don't use a DJ when she performs. Uh, <laughs> So many, Whitney Houston, um, Michael Jackson, oh, who else? Amy Winehouse, uh, yeah, oh. Not even just work with, like I would just wanna meet them, like just watch them in studio, to see them do their thing, you know? Kurt Cobain, oh, yeah, it keeps going. Chester, RP, yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah. I used to listen to Linkin Park a lot back in middle school, so that hit home. Man, I work from the bottom up. Don't take any shortcuts. That's my biggest advice I could give anyone doing anything in the creative field. Um, my manager, I used to like cry to my manager all the time, like, why aren't so-and-so booking me? I have X amount of followers. First off, your followers don't mean shit. Sometimes, sometimes. And um, my manager, would use, he used to tell me like, you need to work from the bottom up. You need to get the OGs respect before you go up, before you like get booked for things. Um, yeah, and he was just like, you gotta be consistent with things. As I started dropping mixes, he was like, look, now your, your fans are like looking forward to the next one. You know, you just gotta, you gotta keep working every day even like when you get lazy with certain things practice practice like it goes yeah there's no excuse for anyone to be like yeah nothing's working out i'm just gonna give up no you're giving up because you're not working hard enough you know what i mean so there's no excuses mm, well now it's like we have a bunch of festivals we get to look forward to tour is done but like i love music festivals so like those are the kinds of shows i look forward to when we're on the road um so we have vlog now coming up um, we have a Red Bull show um, coming up in November in Chicago. Chicago is one of my favorite cities in the U.S., so I always have a blast. So yeah, I'm looking forward to those. I was supposed to go to Puerto Rico in November for my friend's birthday, but I think that's getting canceled. But um, yeah, other than that, that's what I'm looking forward to. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I think that's it.